Hola, I'm Cassandro El Exótico, luchador of Mexican, and I'm going to show you how you never give up. And if you do, I'll kick your butt. Bonjour Cassandro. Thank you for having euh, me. Vous êtes une légende de la lucha libre, c'est le catch mexicain, vous avez été trois fois champion du monde. C'est quoi la lucha libre Est-ce que vous pouvez nous expliquer Lucha libre is wrestling, but it's one of the best uh, sports in Mexico City and it's very famous. And it's very diverse because it has the men, the women, the midgets and then us the exoticos. As the Exoticos are very flamboyant and diverse wrestlers. Comment vous avez commencé la lucha libre? I saw it first in the television. I just fell in love with it. I liked the bodies, I liked the masks, and then me being gay, I loved the men. So I was like, wow, <laughs> this is fun. So at age 16, I started training. It's very intense training, it's four, four hours a day, and it takes a lot to be a wrestler. Vous avez été le premier catcheur mexicain à revendiquer ouvertement votre homosexualité. Comment ça s'est passé It was kind of tough and weird because of the machismo culture and then the men were like so what are these guys doing here and um, but it's been the most amazing thing that I've done. Est-ce que vous avez eu à subir des moqueries, des gens qui vous ont insulté, des violences peut-être Oh yeah. It um, lucha libre mexicana It's like a free therapy session for the audience because they go and they scream at you and they, they can throw things at you and they used to throw bottles to us. Est-ce que vous avez entendu des insultes homophobes pendant, pendant votre carrière? Yeah, of course. Those, those were the worst ones. I think I, when I was very early wrestling, you know, queer, faggot, CC, and in Spanish they get worse, maricón and joto and all those, but... Instead of me putting myself down, I was like, you're going to see what this faggot can do. Comment vous vous êtes fait respecter? Comment vous êtes devenu la star que vous êtes aujourd'hui? By kicking some ass. <laughs> yeah, I like that because I had to work double or triple than any other wrestler because I had to prove to them why I was in the ring. From the dressing room to the ring, that's my female side. I get it. the song I will survive and my my tales. And then once I get in the ring, then my, my macho side kicks in and I'm like, oh no, I'm ready for I'm ready to fight. Mm. And that's how I, I won the respect of the of my coworkers and the audience and promoters because they were like that little guy can can fight. <laughs> Est-ce que vous pensez que votre euh, notoriété, que le fait que vous, que vous soyez ouvertement euh, euh, homosexuel et que vous soyez un des plus grands lutteurs mexicains, a permis de faire avancer la cause des homosexuels au Mexique Yeah, today is way way better than when I started. I mean, when I started, it was really tears and blood and and a lot of hatred. And today, well, I have opened a, a a big road for the new ones to come up. I've, I've paid the price for people to come now. À quoi ça ressemble le corps d'un catcheur de 48 ans? I have a lot of damage. I have uh, seven surgeries. I have three in this knee where I have nine pins and then three surgeries where I have four pins and then my teeth had been knocked out three times. Three times? Three times, yeah. <laughs> um, I've been hospitalized for head concussions eight times and then I had a surgery in my arm because of my cervical damage. That's what I'm struggling right now with. My hands go like this because of my cervical damage. So I need a surgery in this one. But it's wrestling, not a beauty parlor. What can I say? Vous avez des tatouages sur le dos? Two. Et il uh, y en a un d'entre eux, c'est la date de votre sobriété. Vous avez marqué cette date-là. Euh, je crois que c'est le 4 juin 2003. In Lucha Libre, I became a big drug addict just to be part of. After the, the match, I would go into the dressing room and then there were like the big people, like the big stars of Lucha Libre. And they were like, here, have a beer. And I would say, no, thank you, I don't drink. And then they gave me another thing and I was like, mm, no, thank you. And they were like, get out of here. So I had to do everything just to be part of. And when I was part of, I was already all hooked up and addicted. C'était à quel âge ça? I was 18. 17, 18. One day I went back to my town, to El Paso, Texas. I went to this hospital and it said detox center. I got a little bag and that was uh, June 3rd. And I said, I need help. I want to die. I don't want to live no more. Please help me. 
Vous avez été victime d'une agression sexuelle quand vous aviez 6 ans. Euh, vous avez été alcoolique, vous avez été toxicomane, vous avez été victime d'homophobie, vous avez été agressé. Quels conseils vous pouvez donner à euh, des gens qui traversent des périodes difficiles, à des jeunes gays qui sont persécutés What I would tell somebody today is just be yourself and have that freedom to be yourself. If you want to come out, it's fine. If you don't want to come out, it's fine too. But my life doesn't depend on you accepting me. My life depends on me accepting myself. I've been raped, I've been molested, I've been beat up and everything. So what, I, what do I need? Love from me, self-love, self-care.